at a public health facility in southwestern Uganda, researchers and residents discuss one of the leading causes of death in the country. Accounts like this are far too common. Malaria is endemic in Uganda. More than 90% of the country is infested with mosquitoes that carry pathogens that cause the disease. <laughs> According to the health ministry, there are more than 12 million cases reported each year, and the most vulnerable groups are pregnant women and children. To combat the disease, the Ugandan government has rolled out two interventions, indoor residual spraying and insecticide-treated nets. But with limited financial resources, economic researchers say it is important to prioritize interventions on regional basis. There are fewer resources to for public health in general and malaria control programs. With the support of Global Development Network, researcher Ibrahim Kassire from the Economic Policy Research Center conducted a study on cost effectiveness of sprays and nets. The study is part of GDN's project on strengthening institutions to improve public expenditure accountability. The analysis focuses on children under six years old as they are more susceptible to malaria. It finds that indoor residual spraying is more effective because nets cost about 30 US dollars more for each malaria case averted. Nets also cost more by 700 US dollars per death averted. With nets, they are only as effective as their consistent use. So their overall effectiveness remains far lower compared to once they spray the household, you will have the protection. John Bosco Wachimari, who heads the indoor residual spraying program, says malaria prevalence has gone down dramatically with consistent spraying. Indoor residual spraying is very, very effective in that you don't need the behavior change uh, to make sure to remember to put on a net or like that. A, 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 a blanket has already been put over to cover all the individuals in that house. But not everyone approves of this intervention. Many oppose it due to environmental and health concerns. People of this community think that if they spray their houses, that smell which comes from these sprays, it destroys their breathing organs. 11-year-old Kisutu Ibrahim had malaria as a child. He says in his neighborhood, many people do not know much about malaria, let alone the interventions to protect them. They don't know them properly. They just talk, they think they are useless to them. For any intervention to be successful, the government needs to address the concerns of the public, says Jessica Usungwa Sabiti from the Health Ministry. We need to continue communicating people about adverse reactions. I think where we don't do very well is to explain people some uh, unusual reactions can happen, even for well-known interventions. She adds that research is key to executing effective communication strategies and more importantly, deciding which intervention to focus on. I like the idea that uh, more and more we are getting evidence which gives us a bit to compare. We need to translate this message about the cost benefit to make sure that many people can understand this. Not only the policy makers, but also those people who hold the keys to the dollar, Minister of Finance, the parliamentarians. Mother of five, Mexicia Cassandra, says that her house hasn't been sprayed in years and currently uses nets to protect her family from mosquitoes. She says if given a choice of either intervention, she would opt for indoor residual spray.
few people come here to teach them about malaria. The message that I have, I advise people to buy mosquito nets and sprays to help them to avoid diseases like malaria.